Come on and praise the Lord with me. If you're blessed this morning, I need you to type that in the screen this morning. That I am blessed. Come on, type that in the screen. That I'm blessed. And we're blessed in the city. Come on, praise him. Hey, everybody say bless. Say bless.
At the end of June, Governor Whitmer opened up Michigan. And now the question is, when will GNBC open up, Dr. D? Glad you asked. We have finally tentatively identified September the 5th as our return date. We are now in the process of developing the Rolls-Royce plan for the safest and smartest return to in-person worship. I need to remind everyone again and again that Rona has not disappeared and that this Delta variant is very communicable and dangerous. The infection rates are climbing as many are still unvaccinated and presenting a home for the Delta variant. Therefore, for the rest of 2021, we will have worship on the first and third Sunday of the month for no longer than an hour and 15 minutes. Please keep in mind that our worship experience has been modified for your safety. We will take temperatures, have hand sanitizing before entering the sanctuary and or the fellowship hall, and pre-registration will be required. After spending time dialoguing with doctors and health professionals, we are more prepared. Again, your health and safety are still my top priorities. If GNBC was fully vaccinated, our challenges to a full return would be much easier. Since we are not, I must consider the risk associated with a return to in-person worship. We will continue to host vaccination and testing clinics against the virus. We will honor the latest PPE measures recommended by the CDC, county and state health departments. Ultimately, our goal is to have all worshipers feel comfortable and safe while worshiping in GMBC. This includes everyone, the fully vaccinated, those in the process of being vaccinated, and the unvaccinated. We welcome all, but we want to do our due diligence to provide the safest and smartest GMBC worship experience around and inside our building. Thank you for your patience and prayers as we look forward to the 5th of September. But keep in mind, based upon the rates, that also is subject to change. Welcome to Cyber GMBC. August, the best month of the year. Last month, we celebrated our 16th Deaf Awareness Day. We are looking forward to celebrating our Nurses and Ushers Day on the second Sunday with a dynamic word from the Reverend Dr. Janetta Y. Hatcher. We will continue to prepare for our re-entry to in-person worship on September the 5th. Our prayer is that the sermons will be inspirational as well as transformational. We welcome you to our Cyber GMBC experience. Amen. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. For in the word of God, it tells us to enter his courts with thanksgiving and to enter his presence with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us come to the Lord grateful thankful and expecting God to move in our lives. For our scripture this morning is coming out of the book of 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. And it reads, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Amen. Amen. Let our hearts and let our minds be focused on the A clause of this scripture of fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Lord, for this day. We want to thank you, Lord, for allowing us another opportunity to come into your presence, to come to your throne of mercy and grace. 
Thank you, Lord. For as surely as the sun has risen in the sky, you sit on the throne and you still hold all in your hand. You are the creator, the sustainer, and provider of everything. So I know, I know you can take care of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I can come to you and lay my burdens down that I can cast my cares unto you, for you are a burden bearer. For Heavenly Father, in your word, it tells us that come unto me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your yoke is easy and it is light. Thank you, Jesus, for your robe of righteousness that you have clothed me with in the power of your blood. Thank you, Jesus, that you have cleansed me of all my sin and allow me back into relationship with God. Thank you, Jesus, that I am a co-heir of all of God's promises. Hallelujah. We want to thank you, Lord, for the power of your Holy Spirit being a comforter, being a teacher, being the truth that we need in this world. For this world is full of lies. For as I look around in this world, many times I get depressed. If I look within and try to figure it out, I get distressed. But if I look up, Heavenly Father, I know that I am blessed. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that the, your word says that all who keep their thoughts on me, I will keep in perfect peace. Yes, Lord, I can lose my mind with all that is going on in the news, this virus is still running rampant. People still killing one another. People still hurting babies. and People just don't know what to do. Let us all look and turn to you, for you have the final say. You have the final word. Heavenly Father, for victory is in you. We know there is nothing, nothing that this world can do to keep us, Heavenly Father, from the eternal life that we have in Jesus. So let us continue to fight this good fight of faith. Let us continue to find faith that you've given us. Heavenly Father, take my mustard seed and let it move mountains. Take my mustard seed and let it slay Goliath. Take my mustard seed and let it feed thousands. Take my mustard seed and let it open blind eyes. Take my mustard seed and let it open up deaf ears. Take my mustard seed, let it heal broken relationships. Take my mustard seed and let it restore broken marriages. Take my mustard seed and let it tell children to treat their parents with respect. Heavenly Father, take my mustard seed and let justice prevail in this land starting with me. Take my mustard seed, Heavenly Father, Father, and place it in your hand, for you can do anything with it, Heavenly Father. Nothing is impossible as I place my faith in you. Let me fight this good fight of faith. Let me not be distracted by what's going on in the world. Let me walk by faith and not by sight. For your word says the just shall live by faith, Heavenly Father, and let me find my faith only in you and not in any other man or any other thing. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for the name of Jesus. We thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus. We thank you that the blood still works. And we thank you for the eternal life that we have. For these present problems that we have are nothing in comparison to your glory. For eyes have not seen and ears have not heard that which the Lord has prepared for us who keep our faith in him. I pray that you be encouraged. I pray that you keep your eye focused on Jesus, who is our Savior, the author and finisher of our faith. We pray this prayer in his mighty name. Amen. Amen. God sent his son They called him Jesus He came to love Heal and 
forgive He lived and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives hallelujah and then one day this opportunity to give to be a blessing Lord, we ask you to bless that what we give be used to continually build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven lord we thank you for this opportunity we ask now that you bless us keep us lead us and guide us in christ's name we do pray amen and amen
Shall we pray? Divine God, we are thankful for this opportunity to be before you once again. We now ask, O oh Lord, that you give us a word for these, your people, a word that will lift up our spirits, that will edify and educate our minds. Lord, a word that will change our lives, transform our thinking, O oh Lord. And then, Lord, encourage us and yet charge us to do thy will. And, Lord, it can only happen if your word comes forth with power and anointing. And, Lord, I'm asking you, O oh Lord, to allow your word to be filled with anointing and with power. Lord, I ask you to take me and hide me behind your cross, O oh Lord. Take my thoughts and let them be yours. Take my words and let them be yours as well. Use me in spite of me, O oh Lord. This is our prayer, we pray, that someone will listen to this word and be blessed and challenged and transformed. In the master's name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Our scripture for this morning comes from the gospel of St. John, the 19th chapter beginning at the 17th verse, and it reads this way, Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called the skull, in Hebrew, Gothica. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it. Then the leading priest objected and said to Pilate, change it from the king of the Jews to he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate replied, No, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one place from top to bottom. So they said, Rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture that says they divided my garments among themselves and they threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did. I'd like to use a thought from which to preach this morning. What did Jesus see from the cross? What did Jesus see from the cross? There is a bumper sticker that has arrested my attention on several different occasions. It is one that is different than the one that first arrested my attention. It reads, God is my co-pilot. And I'm actually surprised that I seem to be one of the only ones to notice an error in this concept because I don't need God as my co-pilot. I need God as my pilot. I need to be the co and allow God to be the director of my life. There is one whose aim is to create a sense of patriotism, and it reads, if you enjoy freedom, thank a vet. About the bump, that bumper sticker, I have made, and I have mad respect for the veterans who have risked their lives and limbs, often for ostensible causes. Truth be told, I think there have only been two wars that actually brought freedom or independence and that was the Revolutionary and Silver War. And although I have mad respect for all the veterans who risked their life and limb, I have to disagree with that infamous bumper sticker because my freedom is not tied to a veteran, but it is connected to Jesus and our text this morning. It was Isaac Watts who penned the lyrics, at last, and did my savior bleed, and did my sovereign die, would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. 
Here, Lord, I give myself away till all that I can do. And about that time, Ralph E. Hudson asked the chorus, which says, At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. However, this morning, I want to get a different perspective of the cross because if the truth is told, only what Jesus saw from the cross is what made the difference in my life. You see, our text is tailored to teach us another perspective of this event, which is often only preached during Holy Week. Let's travel back 2002, 2001 years ago and revisit the events of our current text. Jesus has been sentenced to die by crucifixion and he's carrying part of his cross up Skull Hill, Golgotha in Aramaic or Calvary in Latin. Jesus is to suffer this capital punishment between two thieves or two criminals who, have, who were possibly members of Barabbas' gangs whose freedom was gained by exchange of taking Jesus' freedom from him. Pilate posted a notice or a sign that read in John's biography, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This notice would bear the name of the convicted and the crime for which they were convicted of. The Roman uh, customarily crucified convicted persons in places where they could be seen by many persons to serve as a deterrent. The notice was written in three different languages. Latin was the legal and official language. Hebrew or Aramaic was the language of the folks from Jerusalem. And Greek was the language of others who might just be passing by and did not speak Aramaic. So Pilate wanted to make certain that everyone who could read would be able to read this notice. The church officers and leaders demanded that Pilate change the wording from the king of the Jews to he said I am the king of the Jews. Unlike before, this time Pilate was unwilling to allow these church leaders to have their way. After all, it was their hatery was the reason why they demanded Pilate crucify Jesus after Pilate had declared him innocent. It was also customary to remove the clothing from the convicted, and according to Roman law, their clothes became the property of the soldiers. Four soldiers divided his headgear, sandals, girdle, and auto garment. Then, the, with his priestly tunic, there was woven without seams, which would make it almost arduous to tear. They decided to cast lots, throw dice, or gamble for his robe, which also fulfilled the prophecy of Psalms 22 and 18. Now that you are with me at the cross, can you imagine Jesus' perspective there? As Jesus looked down from the cross, no doubt he saw his mother weeping and kneeling at his nail-pierced feet. No doubt he saw his disciple and friend John standing nearby. No doubt he saw the Roman soldiers who had ruthlessly nailed him to the tree. He no doubt saw the two thieves who were hanging on the sides of him, one on his right and one on his left. And then he looked and seen his own body naked, bruised, and broken, and bloody. He saw the crowd of spectators, some of whom were mocking, some were condemning, some were weeping and praying, and others were simply watching and looking. Jesus also saw those who misunderstood his mission, those who questioned his motives and authority, those who denounced his miracles, those who blasphemed his name, those who despised his presence, those who condemned his methods, those who criticized his teachings, those who hated on his popularity those who tried to sabotage every move he made, those who did not like him but did not want to leave him alone. On this cross, I believe that Jesus saw a world filled with violence. I believe he saw people filled with haterade. I believe he saw avaricious folks taking everything from themselves with the lack of concern about the least of these. I believe he saw victimizers, victim victimizers victimizing victims and blaming the victims for their circumstance. I believe he saw lives with misery and headaches. I believe he saw those filled with privilege and their aims to keep their position of privilege by ageism, racism, sexism, and all forms of discrimination. I believe he saw exploitation and insidious injustices across the world. I believe he saw the wealthy draining the poor and then celebrating their evil deeds. 
Keys, I believe he saw systematic oppression under the banner of bravery and freedom. I believe he saw lies being treated with more regard than the gospel and the lack of accountability among our governmental, judicial, and public safety officials. No doubt he saw sin's effects on humanity. Jesus couldn't help but see the sorrow, the shame and suffering that sin had caused. He could not help but see the hurt, the headache and horror that sin had resulted in. He could not help but see the pain, perplexity and problems that sin had created, the difficulty, despair and death that sin had produced, the fear, fits and frustration that sin had induced, the misery, madness and mistakes that sin had provoked, the temptation, trouble and tears that sin was the source of no doubt Jesus not only saw the past and present but I believe he saw the future I believe he saw the casualties of war the victims of accidents the sufferers of disasters the failures of society the uh, perpetrators of injustice the promoters of corruption the opponents of equity equality justice and righteousness and trust me brothers and sisters sins of Effect allowed Jesus to see those who our tongues were, whose tongues were lying and deceitful, whose hands were stained with innocent blood, whose eyes were filled with lust and greed, whose feet walked in corruption and sin, whose attitudes were proud and arrogant, whose hearts were hardened and calloused, whose souls were lost and undone. Jesus saw how sin would cause some to rebel against God, how sin would cause some to reject God's word, some to refuse God's mercy, some to resent God's grace, some to deny God's love, some to denounce God's goodness, and others to deplore God's methods. He looked upon sheep that did not have a shepherd. He looked upon children who did not have a home. He looked upon the sick who did not have health insurance. He looked upon the helpless who did not have hope. He looked upon the miserable who did not have comfort. He looked upon the beggar who did not have a friend. He looked upon the poor who didn't have much money. He saw how sin not only affects persons, but how sin also affects situations that would become helpless, how sin would affect circumstances that would become unbearable, how sin would affect difficulties that would become obstinate, how sin would affect problems that would become perplexing, how sin would affect conditions that would become pathetic, how sin would affect adversities that would become deplorable, how sin would affect persecutions that would become painful. But what also did he see? I believe he saw souls. Uh, Jesus saw souls that were a world dying and going to hell. He saw souls that were nations rejecting God's only begotten son. He saw souls of people hardened by sin and refusing to repent. He saw souls in need that no one else could meet. He saw souls in debt that no one else could pay. He saw souls in guilt that no one else could remove. He seen souls that were reduced and nobody else could redeem. Jesus saw souls who were stranded in custom and test, uh, traditions. He saw souls that were wrapped up in unnecessary rituals. He saw souls that were trusting in the works of the flesh. He saw souls that were relying on the blood of animal sacrifice. He saw souls that were persuaded by superstitions. He saw souls that were professing something they did not possess. He saw souls deceived by Satan and his host of demons. Jesus saw from Adam on down everything and everybody he saw those who tried but failed. He saw those who asked but never received an answer. He saw those who expected but never received anything but disappointment. He saw those who prayed but felt as though they had only been praying in vain. He saw those who searched but were never able to find what they were looking for. He saw those who worked but never seemed to advance. He saw those who suffered but never seemed to, to receive any type of assurance. He saw souls whose dreams have been shattered. He saw uh, those whose hopes have been slashed. He saw those whose wobbled had been troubled. He saw those whose bodies have been afflicted. He saw those whose lives have been disrupted. He saw those whose opportunities have been removed. He saw those whose relationships have been ruined. 
Jesus' ability to see beyond our view made it impossible for him not to see the burden, the bleeding, and the bruise, the defeated, the despicable, and the dying, the floundering, the forsaken, and the fools, the hateful, the headstrong, and the high and mighty, the machos, the misfits, and the maladjusted. He saw the nasty, the naughty, and the nobodies. He saw the ruins, the rebellious, and the reprobates. But thank God, not only did Jesus see souls, thank God that not only did Jesus see the effects of sin, but thank God he also saw salvation from the cross. Not only does God see the bad, but God also sees the potential. Not only does God see the surface, but God also looks deeper than the surface and sees the heart. Jesus saw another group of folk from the cross that would read and hear his words of hope. He saw some folks that would realize their faults and failures. He saw some folks that would repent of their trespasses and sins. He saw some folks who would receive him as their savior and Lord. He saw some folks who would release their faith and trust in Jesus. He saw some folks who would reaffirm their confidence in him. He saw some folks who would reveal their love and devotion to him by living for him. He saw some saints who would face the enemy for his sake. He saw some saints who would suffer great persecution for his sake. He saw some saints who would endure horrible pain for his sake. He saw some saints who would be put into prison for his sake. He saw some saints who would become outcasts for his sake. He saw some saints that would be ridiculed and rejected for his saints. He even saw some folks, some saints who would even die for his sake. And in the midst of that crowd, he even saw those who would one day preach his gospel. He saw those who would one day teach his word. He saw those who would one day sing his praises. He seen those in the crowd that would one day seek his peace. He saw those in the crowd, those who would one day proclaim his promises. He saw those in the crowd that would one day magnify his marvelous name. He saw those who would love everyone despite their differences. He saw those that would stand for justice and fight against oppression. He saw those that would speak truth to power and proclaim equity, equality, and liberation for all of humanity. He saw those who had more dedication to being prophetic than they were concerned about being popular. Jesus Christ being without sin takes our place and plows a path through our sin and rebellion, leading a way back to God. Well, because of what Jesus saw on the cross, I can look at the cross a whole lot differently. It's at the cross at Calvary that you can now see what you might not have been able to see once before. Standing at the foot of the cross, you can see yourself. At the foot of the cross, you can see the world, the sin, and other things in a manner that you've never seen before. When I look at Calvary, I see Satan defeated. I see chains of sin broken. I see demons are bound. I see fears are abolished. I see bodies are healed. I see lives are changed. I see hearts rejoicing. It's when I see the cross, I now see the doors of deliverance are still open. I see the shackles of sin have been broken. I see the sting of death has been removed. I see the power of the grave has been destroyed. I see the kingdom of God has been established. I see the gates of hell have been defeated. I see the hopes of the saints has been perfected and completed. When I look at Calvary, I realize at Calvary, I can see the bitter become sweet. I can see the hardened become tender. I can see the filthy become clean. I can see the bad become good. I can see the weak become strong. I can see the sad become glad. I can see the burden become blessed. I can see the wrongs made right. I can see losses turn into wins. I can see hurts that are now healed. I can see offenses that have now been forgiven. I can see captives that are now free. I can see the good become better. I can see nobody's become somebody. I can see losers turn into winners. I can see the outcasts become included. I can see the underdogs become champions. I can see the victims 
now become victorious. I can see the downtrodden now become overcomers. I can see the tried and the tested become triumphant. When I look at the cross from Jesus' perspective, I see all that happened at that cross called Calvary. And I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I'm so glad that Jesus saw me at the cross. I'm so glad that he saw you at the cross. I'm so glad he saw the systems of systematic oppression, of discrimination, of racism, of sexism, of ageism, and every other ism that was against God's will at the cross. He saw the poor being taken advantage of. He saw the rich exploiting others. He saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. He saw all that we have done in the past. He's even seen what we're going through right now. He saw the coronavirus. He saw what we're now enduring. And the good news is, still at the cross, not only did he see the current, not only did he see the past, not only did he see our present, but he also saw our future. He saw your future, and he saw my future. And thanks be to God, he stayed on the old rugged cross. He hung his head, and then he died. But the record is, they took him down off of the old rugged cross. They placed him in a borrowed tomb. Joseph of Arimathea had told them, can I have his body and let it be placed in my tomb? Well, not only was he there Friday afternoon, not only was he there Friday night, not only was he there Saturday morning, not only was he there Saturday afternoon, not only was he there Saturday night, but thanks be to God, I said thanks be to God, that's not the end of my story, for the record bears that early Sunday morning, he got up from the borrowed tomb. He got up and gave his papers back to Joseph of Arimathea because he no longer needed to borrow his tomb. And the record is he stepped out on resurrection ground and he just wear the word around for a few more days with his disciples so that they could see that his work on the cross was not in vain. He allowed Thomas to stick his hand in his side. He allowed Thomas to place his finger in the hole of his hand. And he allowed them to know that I once was alive. I died, but I'm alive forevermore. So I thank God that when Jesus was on the cross, he saw my sins. I thank God he saw the systems of oppression. He saw all that we encounter, but he still died on the cross. I thank God that in spite of our nastiness, in spite of our hatred, in spite of our violence, in spite of our mistreatment, in spite of our discrimination, in spite of our oppression, he stayed on the cross. He got up on the third day. I thank God for what Jesus saw on the cross. He saw sin. He saw our souls. But ultimately, he knew he was salvation. So I'm glad I'm like the songwriter. I thank God for the cross. I thank God for the cross. I thank God for the cross. 
is there anybody that's going to join me and thank God for the cross, Calvary, Golgotha, the place of the skull, whatever you call it, it's a hill that changed my condition. It's a hill that changed my life. It's a hill that changed my perspective. It's a hill that changed my outlook. It's a hill that changed my future. I thank God for the cross. I thank God for the cross. Is there anybody that's listening that thanks God for the cross? Tell him yeah. Tell him yeah. Tell him yeah. What did Jesus see on the cross? He saw the effects of sin. He saw our souls. But ultimately, he seen himself as salvation. And because of that, thanks be to the cross, our lives can always be better. There is hope because of the cross. Thank God that despite all Jesus saw on the cross, he stayed there to complete his mission. And that was to bring salvation to every one of you. Won't you trust the Lord this morning? Won't you trust a God who saw the future and stayed on the cross? Won't you trust a God who saw the present and stayed on the cross? Won't you trust the God who saw the past and stayed on the cross until salvation was made applicable for you and I? Thank God for what Jesus seen on the cross. If you were blessed by the worship experience and would like prayer to give your heart and life to Jesus or to simply join the GMBC family, please go to our Facebook page and inbox us or complete the new discipleship form on our website at gmbcwestland.org or you can even call the church at 734-721-2557. Also, we thank you for your giving and pray that God will bless you. There are various ways to give your tithes and offering. Bill Pay, Givelify, PayPal, and Zelle. You can also mail them to the church or drop them in our mail slot at 29066 Eaton, Westland, Michigan, 48186. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Instagram. We pray that what you just experienced was a blessing for and to you. Our continued prayer is for those on the front line against COVID-19 and this new Delta variant, and those whose lives were and are impacted by this. We also pray for the vaccinated, those in the midst of vaccination and the hesitant and those who will refrain altogether from the vaccine we pray that god's healing and wisdom will accompany them in their decision making may god bless you and may god bless your heart